This is CNN Breaking News. Donald J. Trump, President-Elect of the United States. Let's discuss this historic upset with historians. Douglas Brinkley, CNN presidential historian, and Julian Zelizer, a historian and professor at Princeton University. Gentlemen, this is uncharted territory. Uh, the man or woman, but usually the man, who forwards the agenda of stoking hate, of what people would call demagoguery, uh, sometimes raises... Uh, but does not elevate all the way. He did this time. What does it mean? I think he promoted fear. You know, we always talk about Franklin Roosevelt. We have nothing to fear but fear itself. But he made Americans feel very afraid, very afraid about ISIS, very afraid about um, immigrants, very afraid about Muslims, very afraid about even your neighbors. Um, I've, I've always found that problematic. I see it with Joe McCarthy, and you did McCarthyism, but you had Eisenhower to kind of taper out McCarthyism. Here you have some of those qualities in Donald Trump. He's a nativist candidate. We've had anti-immigration candidates before. There was a know-nothing party in the 19th century, but now he's president. Can he not be that way? Can he be a uniter like he did? And I thought his quite um, eloquent um, victory speech tonight. We know what would have been historic about Hillary Clinton's win. What's so historic about Donald Trump's? Well, obviously you have someone who comes with no experience in politics and is now the president of the United States. And that's States. never happened before. Yeah, well, we've had Dwight Eisenhower, for example, but he had a lot of military yeah. experience <laughs> and he had some role and even Hoover also had a, a role in, in government. So that's different. You also have, uh, as, as you just said, someone who played to the fringe elements of American society, to the anger, to the hatred, but made it the mainstream message of a party. And now he is the president of the United States. I'm more skeptical about the kind of transition that he's going to make. He now has united government. That's the third important part of what's just happened. We're not talking about that. Well, but you are using the historical definition of united government, which is the Senate and House will have the same party designation, but they ain't united, Douglas. Uh, he's got to figure out how to get his own back into his tent. He ran as much against them as he did against Hillary Clinton. And it's a divided population still. This is 2000 Bush versus score redone. This is John Kerry versus Bush, meaning it's still pretty tight in there. But um, I think it's going to be interesting to see who's the new Trump cabinet. I think Newt Gingrich has been a cultural survivor in 1994, the contract with America. You think he'll be in the cabinet? I think he may end up... Rudy well, Giuliani, Chris Christie? Giuliani, Homeland Security. Gingrich would have a shot at Secretary of State yeah. or How Chief of Staff. How about Chris Christie, given that he has been wounded by the yeah. court case, but he's uh, a loyalist well, to Donald Trump? Trump, Trump likes loyalists. Um, there might be a position for him. I don't know at this point. think he gets through confirmation? I don't think through confirmation, so it might have to be as a White House advisor on domestic policy or on security. I, I mean, I would say, though, even with the divisions in the GOP, it's important we don't overstate that from the start. Uh, a lot of his views have support in the House Republican Caucus, for example, on immigration. This has been an issue. Uh, they now have a president to support them. And the Republicans lined up behind Donald Trump. I know there were outliers. I know there were critics. But he got the nomination. Most of them did not totally distance themselves from him. And my guess is the thrill and excitement of united government and the potential could motivate Republicans in Congress to put aside some of their differences. Well, he made his immigration plan very simple, right? I mean, it was one word for a long time, yeah. wall. And most of his own party does not want a wall. Deportation would be an easier sell if he has the money uh, to affect it. So then we saw something that, again, is going to require some historical analysis. He gets there by stoking people's fears and anger, period. He then last night says, no more fear and anger, let's unify. That was unusual. It's, it's very usual to hear someone be conciliatory as president-elect right. of the United States. But when it is direct contradiction to your campaign message, how does that work? Well, he contradicts himself a lot, right? Walt Whitman once said, the great American poet, I am large, I can tame multitudes, so what if I contradict myself? It's kind of an American characteristic. Uh, we've talked about him being a, a Buffalo Bill or P.T. Barnum, but also we like improvisation in America. And Twitter is improv, you know, on the spot. All the things he did. There's kind of an American character in many ways, Donald Trump. So um, look, 
He won Hillary Clinton. It's not been talked about because we're all good sports. She didn't run a great campaign. She never got rid of the email problem. She had a kind of Walter Mondale syndrome or something to her. It was amazing. History will mark that we had the first woman to get the nomination of a major party. Big deal. But I don't think there are going to be great write-ups coming in that she ran a, a kind of campaign, even though she won all three debates. That's what's amazing. The, so, de the debates seem less she important. She won three debates so, according to whom? According to a lot of people. I think they right, all but I'm trying to that got everything Maybe wrong. not the people who elected right. Trump. Good, good right. point. And so in terms of unity, yeah. what does history teach us, even in other countries, about after all of the toxicity, can there be unity? What's the path to that? I'm, uh, I, I'm always skeptical. It doesn't last long. Uh, you can think of 9-11, for example, when we had this national crisis, and there was a moment of unity. But Even international broke, unity it, at that time. But it broke down quickly, and uh, the partisan divide is so deep uh, that issues like airport security became points of partisan contention months after this horrific attack. And with elections, uh, they don't uh, heal. Many Democrats will wake up, they're waking up, they're angry, they're ready to try to win the White House in the next election. And Republicans are going to double down. I don't think they are going to calm down on the tension. More than anything else, the Democrats are afraid. And that's something yeah. that Trump can use to create po progress. All right, Bar gentlemen. Barack Obama, I think, has an opportunity, the president, to kind of bond with Trump in some kind of way this Thursday yes. to move the national We know that it will be their first forward. visit on be Thursday. It's quite a visit. It sure yeah. will. Gentlemen, thank you very much for all of the context. So how did Donald Trump crack?